Hendrikus Kolein was a Dutch soldier, businessman and politician who was Prime Minister of the Netherlands from 1925 to 1926 and again from 1933 to 1939. Early life. He was born on the 22nd of June 1869 in the Harlem Omeer to Anthony Kolein and Anna Verkuil who had migrated to the newly created Harlem Ermir Polder from the land of Hosden in Altena for religious reasons. He was the first of six children, all born in Harlem and Mermir. Colain grew up in the land of Altena, military service. At the age of 16, he went to a military academy in Campen for officer training, where he graduated as a second lieutenant in 1892. In 1893, he married Helena Granenberg and was sent to the Dutch East Indies. During his 16 years in the Dutch East Indies, he spent 10 years in the colonial army, serving in the ACEH war as the lieutenant of J. B. Van Hutes, and six further years in the colonial administration, having the same role towards Van Hutes when the latter became governor-general in 1904. Colain's letters to his wife from his period on Lombok reveal his participation in acts of brutality which by modern standards would be considered severe war crimes. I have seen a mother carrying a child of about six months old on her left arm, with a long lance in her right hand, who was running in our direction. One of our bullets killed the mother as well as the child. From now on we couldn't give any mercy, it was over. I did give orders to gather a group of nine women and three children who asked for mercy and they were shot all together. It was not a pleasant job, but something else was impossible. Our soldiers tacked them with pleasure with their bayonets. It was horrible. I will stop reporting now, political life. After his return to the Netherlands in 1909, he was elected as an anti-revolutionary party member of parliament for the district Sneek. In 1911, he was appointed Minister of War and revised the Dutch selective service system. From 1914 to 1922 he served as CEO for the Batafs Petroleum March Appage. In 1925, he also became CEO of Royal Dutch Shell. In May 1918 he acted as an intermediary between the British and Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany to arrange an armistice, resulting in the Kaiser getting refuge in the Netherlands. Prime Minister. In 1922 he accepted the political leadership of the anti-revolutionary party from Dr. Abraham Kaipur. Between 1925-1926 and 1933-1939 he served five times as Prime Minister. During the 1930s his government faced the effects of the Great Depression, which took a heavy toll on the Netherlands. Colain's government responded to the economic crisis with a very strict fiscal policy, which may have further weakened the Dutch economy. Colain's decision to adhere to the gold standard until 1937, long after most of the trading partners of the Netherlands had dropped it, also played a role in lengthening the economic crisis. From 1927 to 1929, he also was head of the Dutch delegation to the League of Nations in Geneva, World War II and death. After the Dutch defeat in the Battle of the Netherlands in 1940, he published an essay entitled On the Border of Two Worlds, in which he called for accepting German leadership in Europe immediately after the royal house had fled to England, leaving him behind. His view was influenced by the tremendous show of force the German Blitzkrieg had shown and the relative weakness of the Allied forces. Soon thereafter, he tried to organize political resistance but was arrested in June 1941 and taken to Berlin for interrogation. Late in the war after the tide had turned against the Germans, according to a grandson, Himmler wanted to keep Colain available as a possible intermediary with the British, as he had done earlier for Wilhelm II. The very fact that the Gestapo allowed the visit suggests that Himmler was already making contingency plans in case of a German loss. In March 1943 Colain was put under house arrest in a remote mountain hotel in Ilmenor, where he died on 18 September 1944.